Hey, good Monday morning everybody. Jim Bull coming at you here from my backyard today. So uh, it's nice and cool out this morning. A little bit of change from what the weather's been like. So I thought I'd hang out in the backyard here and uh, just come with this Proverbs. We're on chapter 29 today in our Motocross for Christ Bible study. And we're winding down. I mean, we're getting through it. Uh, what do we do next, huh? You know, I've had a bunch of people tell me or thank me for doing this and uh, ask me to continue. And to be honest with you, I'm really have grown over the last 29 days from this, so I want to keep going. A couple different books I'm looking at that are faith-based that we may jump into. One is Rick Warren's uh, Purpose Driven Life. I have another book that I'm reading that's pretty, pretty straight at you called What Happens to Us After We Die, written by a local Presbyterian minister, and that talks about heaven and hell. And we all, you know, are reading in this book that hell's kind of disappeared from our churches. You know, we all want to believe that. We accept Christ and everything's going to be good and and you get into church and the pastors haven't been talking about going to hell, but it's a real valid issue and it's, it's reality, man. So we might get into some of that eventually. I don't know, but I'm going to ask you too. I'm going to get everything over. I have a, a small YouTube channel. I'm going to get everything posted over there and I'm going to ask you guys to start coming over there to watch this stuff. We'll still share it through Facebook, but you can subscribe to my channel there and that way you'll get a notification if you want you can put an email in there or a text you can get a, a notification when i post something new so it's easy to keep up that way but anyhow we'll get that done in the next couple of days i'll let you know when that goes live but let's get into it proverbs 29 and i didn't see any real revolution revelations here when i read through earlier this morning but just reinforcing wisdom and how we should try and live our lives so these are words from god proverbs 29 new living translation Whoever stubbornly refuses to accept criticism will suddenly be destroyed beyond recovery. Ooh. When the godly are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, they groan. Isn't it true? Man, people complain and moan and blah, 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 blah. I don't think we got a whole lot of holiness going on at the top. So we got to get that back. We, we got to find men of integrity, women of integrity. You know, like this upcoming election, you know, there's a, I hate going here, but you know, don't vote for her just because she's a woman and you want to see our first woman president. We maybe did that a few years ago in another scenario. And I think things have become much worse as far as uh, peace on earth and you know, racial tension we were getting over and, and all that. But anyhow, when the godly are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, they groan. We've been groaning, man. Verse 3 says, The man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father. But if he hangs around with prostitutes, his wealth is wasted. Ain't that the truth? And it's just not the prostitute. It could be a, any type of addiction or any type of wrong path in your life. A just king gives stability to his nation, but one who demands bribes destroys it. To flatter friends is to lay a trap for their feet. Let's be honest and be real. We talked about this yesterday. Shoot straight. No more sugarcoating. Let's just get on with it. The godly care about the rights of the poor. The wicked don't care at all. Mockers can get a whole town agitated, but the wise will calm anger. I was a real angry person when I was younger, and it just comes with maturity and getting closer to God and what he wants for us, what his purpose is for our life. If a wise person takes a fool to court, there will be ranting and ridicule, ridicule, but no satisfaction. Okay, is it really the answer? The bloodthirsty, just forgive them. Forgive them and move on, you know? Get on with your life. They've got to deal with the judgment with God. It's, you know, we all do. So forgive them and move on. Maybe don't forget about it. I had in my book there today, Forgive and Forget, and I believe that, but we have to learn the lessons. We have to learn the lessons. Fools vent their anger, but the wise quietly hold it back. There you go, man. The poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. So that's saying the good and the bad, we, we all have the, the fact that the Lord's there. It's, are, we, are we embracing him? Are we accepting him? If a king judges the poor fairly, his throne will last forever. To discipline a child produces wisdom, 
but a mother is disgraced by an undisciplined child. Again, this, this chapter seems to be reinforcing a lot of what we've talked about through the first 28. When the wicked are in authority, sin flourishes, but the godly will live to see their downfall. We will prevail in the end. And whether, whether the, the big end, you know, the, coming, the second coming of Christ, whether that happens in our lifetime or not, we'll prevail when our, this body of ours dies off. If you accept Jesus as your Savior and believe that he died for you on the cross for your sins, and you ask the Lord for forgiveness of what you've done, and continue to do. I've been struggling with sin, and I'm learning a little more. I was studying some this morning. I'm a guy. I'm still a fool, man. A lot of times, I jump to conclusions, and and you mature as a Christian. God has a purpose for all of us, but our purpose continues to. I hate to use the word evolve, but our purpose continues to evolve as we become closer to Him and learn more about Him. And when I say Him, I mean God. So, get in the Word, study, read you know listen uh, however it works for you to get the information you need absorb it like a sponge discipline your children they go on again uh, discipline your children and they will give you peace of mind and will make your heart glad when people do not accept divine guidance they run wild but whoever obeys the law is joyful Words alone will not discipline a servant. The words may be understood, but they are not heeded. I talked about this the other night at Pagoda. Be an example. People won't, your children, your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, they won't do what you tell them to do or what you think they should do. They'll only do, they'll do what you do. So be the example. They will do what you do. And there's other, there's cases, you know, like I, I completely changed my life because I, I wanted, I broke the pattern. I was in the pattern. I did what my folks did, you know, but I broke the pattern. I wanted more. So it, it's really tough to, to do that. You're going to have to have a lot of motivation. It's the, you know, the, the fear of missing something or the fear of uh, missing out or wanting to be able to gain. That's our motivators, you know. Our two main motivators are the fear of, of losing something and the ability to gain. What's in it for me? And if you take that and use it for the glory of God, everything will be groovy. There's more hope for a fool than for someone who speaks without thinking. You know, God just keeps freaking hitting me right upside my head. Thank you, Lord. Okay. A servant pampered from childhood will become a rebel. And you know, I, I go back to that. And you know, my wife and I were talking about this last night. It's just, it's in me. I've listened so much and I haven't even studied the Bible a lot, but I've, I've listened to a lot of sermons and good information on CD over the years. I've read a lot of books. And most of those are biblical based. You know, you got to know, folks, that that all these success books, they're all biblical based. The, the authors just don't quote God or scripture because they're afraid they won't reach the secular community. Secular being the non-believing community. There's not a principle in life that's not from God that will make you get ahead or let you get ahead in life. Just understand that. I don't care how it's written, who's quoted as the author of it. The, God is the author of all. Bottom line. A servant pampered from childhood will become a rebel, more on discipline. An angry person starts fights. A hot-tempered person commits all kinds of sin. If we don't think and just fly off, you know, pride ends in humiliation, while humility brings honor. I struggle every day with that. How about you? If you were winding down here, verse 24, if you assist a thief, you only hurt yourself. You are sworn to tell the truth, but you dare not testify. So it just brings on more sin. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice comes from the Lord. I'm learning about justification. When we, when we accept Christ as our Savior, we're justified in the Lord, meaning that we have our free pass in no matter what we've done. Justification, sanctification, there's a little bit of difference between them. I'm learning. I'll get back to you on it, okay? But justice comes from the Lord. Only the Lord can justify us, and that's through Christ's blood. Verse 27, the last verse of the chapter says, The righteous despite the unjust, the wicked despise the godly. 
So it, it, the righteous, those who know the God, despise the unjust. The Lord is righteous one. The wicked despise the godly. The bad folks don't like us either because they know that we got something they don't. You know, I was doing my getting ready to do my my church service at Pagoda the other night, and a couple guys were sitting around drinking beer. And they're all good friends of mine. I love them all. They're great people too, by the way. You know, just because they drink don't mean that they don't have good hearts. You know, they're good people. You know. And they found out we were getting ready to start the church service. Jim Bull was going to do it. And one guy looks at me and says, Jim Bull, can the beer drinker stay? And I begged him, please do. I didn't beg him. But I said, absolutely, man. We love you guys, too. Just because you drink beer don't mean you don't love the Lord or can't love the Lord. I'm, not a, I'm, I, I, I'm totally against drinking because I believe that it leads to all kind of trouble. Brings things upon us that, that it's, it's self-inflicted sin. It can change a situation just like that. It happened in my family just the other night, and I'm hoping that everything can be resolved because of it. And it's continued to happen in my family for years and years and years. And as long as you keep pouring that devil's juice, that's what he called it. Got any that devil juice, Jim Bull? That's a moonshine hanging out, all right? As long as you keep pouring that gel, devil's juice, you can do whatever you want to into your body. It's going to affect how you make your decisions, and sometimes it's just not going to turn out so good. So... Uh, could have went off on a much bigger tangent on that because it's been a, a total, total turnaround in my life. So, and you know, some people can handle it and still make good decisions and, and, and do it the proper way, you know. My, me and my wife even sometimes, if we go out on a date and we're spending the night, we don't have to drive anywhere. We may have a drink or two in our rooms. Uh, but, you know, hey, take it with the <laughs> between you and God. I'll leave it at that. It's between you and God. I love you guys. That is Proverbs chapter 29. Have a great week and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Later.